From an incredible close-range demolition of an abandoned Russian factory and a 20-story building in China that came down in a matter of seconds, to a well-built power plant in California that was easily turned into a cloud of dust, and a massive skyscraper in Texas that might just be the craziest demolition you've ever seen. Here are 30 minutes of extreme building demolitions. Chongqing is a major city in central China. Its position on the Yangtze River makes it a strategic gateway into the western part of the country. There's always something going on, whether something's being built or getting torn down. On January 14th of 2015, Chongqing waved goodbye to the Xinyi building. The 20-story tower sat in the middle of the Shopping Ba business district, but it was getting old and standing in the way of a new expansion project. It only took two seconds for all 20 stories to come crumbling down. They worked on the area before tearing the Xinyi Tower down. The giant pit caught the building and contained much of the dust and debris. Still, that didn't stop the cloud from spreading into the streets. People were forced to cover their mouths as they walked through the area. You can even see where the dust settled on the sidewalk. Those footprints and bike tracks wouldn't be there under normal circumstances. The new project was meant to expand the Chongqing city center. They plan on rebuilding the Xinyi Tower. This time, it'll be five times larger than the original. The new center will also become a traffic hub, improving the efficiency of public transport. The Marina View Park in Chula Vista, California was buzzing with excitement in February of 2013. About a thousand locals gathered to watch an old Southern California icon implode. Some even arrived as early as 4 a.m. to get a good seat. The 165-foot South Bay power plant was a staple of Chula Vista. Built in the 1960s, it produced enough energy to power 500,000 homes across Southern California. But in 2010, the plant was decommissioned as other, cleaner facilities could make up for the lost power. Some believe it was an eyesore on the marina. Others called it part of the family and were sad to see it go. At least the old landmark went out with a bang. The South Bay plant was a stubborn roadblock for the longest time. Chula Vista dreamed of building a beautiful bayfront community with parks, hotels, housing, and shopping. But that darned power plant kept getting in their way. They'd been fighting to have it dismantled since 1998. In 2013, they finally got their wish. Today, the area is being transformed into the Gaylord Pacific Resort and Convention Center. The centerpiece will feature a 1,600-room hotel, four ballrooms, and resort-style amenities like spas, pools, and a lazy river. Construction is underway, with everything expected to open in the summer of 2025. The Landmark Tower was a 30-story skyscraper in downtown Fort Worth, Texas. It was the tallest building in the city for nearly 20 years, between 1957 and the opening of the Fort Worth National Bank Tower in 1974. In its heyday, Landmark was famous for its 77-ton revolving digital clock on the roof. 
The clock cost $196,000, or about $2.1 million today. The building itself was the home of Continental National Bank until 1982. Another bank bought the building in the mid-80s, but it was ultimately abandoned in 1990. It stood vacant for 16 years. For safety reasons, the city removed the 77-ton clock, which hadn't worked since 1991. The tower even survived an EF3 tornado in 2000. Several projects to utilize the tower went bankrupt, and restoring the building was too expensive. So, they decided to tear the whole thing down on March 18th of 2006. It took 364 pounds of explosives to take down the landmark tower. Due to the dust and debris, the city evacuated a 15-block radius around the building until everything settled. From 2008 to 2016, the old landmark property was used as a simple parking lot. In 2016, crews broke ground on Cowtown Place, a 312,000-square-foot parking garage that opened in 2017. It can hold up to 833 cars in one of Fort Worth's busiest downtown areas. There is no rotating digital clock, though. The old Georgia Dome was a $214 million stadium completed in 1992. At the time, it was one of the largest state-funded construction projects in Georgia's history. It was the home of the Atlanta Falcons NFL team, but also hosted concerts and basketball games. When it debuted, the Georgia Dome was the second largest covered stadium in the world. It was eventually surpassed by AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, home of the Dallas Cowboys. It hosted two Super Bowls, the 1996 Summer Olympics, and WrestleMania 27. But all good things must come to an end. In 2017, the new Mercedes-Benz Stadium went up next door. With no need for two stadiums, Atlanta tore the Georgia Dome down. On November 20th of 2017, some locals gathered on the rooftops to watch the stadium disappear. Uh, I like how everyone's all quiet. This way we won't be able to hear. Some people are still driving over that bridge over there. <laughs> Although I think they just got it down the one lane of. It took 4,800 pounds of explosives to bring down the stadium. When the dust finally settled, two large sections were still standing. But it wasn't anything some heavy machinery couldn't handle, or so they thought. It turned out that some of the explosives didn't detonate. So, a second demolition was scheduled. This time, a window on the neighboring convention center shattered, but was quickly replaced. As for the former Georgia Dome, it was turned into a green space for tailgating Falcons games. In the heart of North Texas, Dallas stands out as a contemporary metropolis, acting as both a commercial and cultural beacon for the area. With its array of local attractions and compelling affordability, it's no wonder many Americans are keen on relocating here. Over the years, the skyline has changed dramatically. Old buildings are brought down to make way for new developments. On February 16th of 2020, one of these demolitions didn't go quite as planned.
it's safe to say that didn't quite go according to plan. As you can see, a major part of the building is left standing, leaving crews scratching their heads at what to do now. Locals quickly adopted the term Leaning Tower of Dallas for obvious reasons. Only a few weeks later, however, the demolition company came back with massive cranes and finally took down the remainder of the building. It may have been short-lived, but the Leaning Tower of Dallas was a landmark many locals won't soon forget. Zhengzhou is a prefecture-level city in Fujian Province, China. It sits in the southeast corner, overlooking the Taiwan Strait. It's home to about 5 million people who rely on an intricate highway system to get around. On August 25th of 2015, those drivers had to find alternate routes. That's because demolition crews had lined a long stretch of overpass with explosives. A crowd gathered to watch what was sure to be a spectacle. According to reports, this was one of the longest bridges ever detonated in Chinese history. The fun colors in the middle were a little cherry on top of the record-breaking explosion. Otherwise, we don't know much about this bridge, why they tore it down, or what they replaced it with. If we had to guess, it was probably in bad shape and they wanted to build something safer. The AFE Tower was a 38-story office building in the West End District of Frankfurt, Germany. Between 1972 and 1974, it was the tallest building in the city. It was quickly outsized by the DZ Bank Building and a Marriott Hotel. The building once housed the social sciences and education departments for Johann Wolfgang Goethe University. But when they moved out in 2013, the campus no longer needed the 381-foot tower. On February 2nd of 2014, a crowd gathered to watch the building crumble. To this day, it is the tallest European building to be demolished by an implosion. It took over 2,000 pounds of explosives to bring the AFE tower down. Thousands of people gathered, but nobody was allowed within 250 meters of the blast site. They were supposed to take the building down gradually, but locals protested the idea. They rather did come down in one fell swoop than endure months of noisy demolition work. Huron, Ohio is a small city west of Cleveland, where the mouth of the Huron River meets Lake Erie. It's home to nearly 7,000 people and used to be the site of an old ConAgra mill and grain silo. For those who don't know, ConAgra is an American consumer packaged goods company. They make and sell products for brands like Act 2 Microwave Popcorn and Chef Boyardee. In 2006, the Ohio Department of National Resources bought out the old ConAgra facility in Huron. The 20-acre parcel of land sat on a key piece of Huron's waterfront. They wanted to turn it into a riverfront development featuring restaurants, condos, stores, and green space. They just had to get rid of that eyesore of a mill first. The implosion attracted thousands of people from across the local area. 
It became a real spectacle when people started tailgating and selling VIP tickets and t-shirts. Thankfully, that money went toward the Huron Food Pantry and the Parks and Recreation Foundation. Taking down the mill building was only the first step. Once the dust settled, heavy machines moved in to take down the remaining grain silos. Most of us take water towers for granted. We see them everywhere, but we don't stop to think about what they do. In a nutshell, they help regulate pressure and water levels throughout a system by storing treated water and managing flow. They kick in during peak hours, like in the morning, and fill back up during slow hours, like the middle of the night. As a community grows, so does its need for water. So, old towers must be replaced by newer, bigger, and more efficient ones. The best way to do that is by tearing down the old tower and building something else. And because these things are so big, they make for great demolition clips, like this tower in Belton, Texas. This 150,000-gallon tank was built in 1979. It was decommissioned several years before this demolition due to safety concerns. They were worried that the aging tower was deteriorating and could become hazardous to the drinking water. Most modern towers can hold about 1 million gallons. They're usually large enough to hold one day's worth of water for the community they serve. The Red Road Flats, once a marvel of Glasgow's skyline, were an ambitious housing project built in the 1960s. Consisting of eight blocks, they were among the tallest residential structures in Europe upon their completion. As decades passed, the Red Road Flats faced challenges. Changing social conditions, structural issues, and a shift in public perception about high-rise living led to their decline. By the 2000s, many viewed them as symbols of urban decay, and discussions about their demolition began. It took some time, but on June 10th of 2012, one of the main buildings was finally brought down. The demolition was a massive success. Watching it again in slow motion is always surreal to see a building that large disappear in only a matter of a few seconds. The remaining buildings you see in the background were also all eventually demolished over the next three years. With the flats gone, a chapter closed on a significant piece of Glasgow's urban history, but hopefully also paved the way for fresh beginnings. The Clarion Hotel and Casino was a 200-room hotel that had been open since 1970. Despite its prime location in Las Vegas, Nevada, the Clarion's commercial success ended in failure due to the appearance of its buildings and its rooms, which looked like cubicles as claimed by its owner. This led its founder to embark on creating a new hotel that would stand out from the rest without having a generic look or cramped feel. To make way for this new development, the Clarion was demolished on February 10th of 2015. Five, four, three, two, one. After a countdown by onlookers, the explosives rang out and the building came crumbling down. Or so they thought. After a few moments, it became evident that the building's elevator shaft had withstood the explosion and remained standing. Crews were quick to act, though. Just 12 hours after the initial blast, a crane was brought in to finish the job once and for all. Lower Swatara Township is a little town in Dauphin County, Pennsylvania, about 100 miles west of Philadelphia. 
It's home to about 9,500 people with quick access to the Pennsylvania Turnpike. But on March 29th of 2015, locals were barred from using a 19-mile stretch of highway. That's because a bridge was about to explode. Don't worry, it was a controlled demolition. Crews fit the rigid frame structure with explosives, but waited until nightfall when the highway closure wouldn't impact traffic too badly. One local man arrived just in time to record this amazing moment. Seven, six, five. In slow motion, you can see where the explosives begin in the middle of the bridge and quickly branch left and right. The blast sends debris flying in every direction. Thankfully, they set up a perimeter so nobody got hurt. What you're looking at used to be the Nisley Street Bridge. They tore it down to make way for a new project that would allow them to widen the turnpike below. Today, the newly named Baker Avenue Bridge sits in old Nisley's place. The official record for longest bridge demolition in China goes to a two-mile viaduct in Wuhan. Viaducts are bridge-like structures meant to carry road or railway traffic. They usually feature arches and look like old Roman aqueducts. But the Romans weren't the only ones building these architectural marvels. The Chinese had them too. What makes the Chinese ones different are the densely populated areas where they're built. The Xuanyang Viaduct in Wuhan was extra tricky to take down. It was surrounded by 100,000 volt wires, 30 gas pipelines, and many residential buildings. Luckily, this demolition crew got all their math right. The viaduct was built in 1997, but came down in May of 2013. You can see where they covered the bridge in cloth wrappings and reinforced the pillars with water-filled bladders. Ideally, the water combines with the dust and prevents it from spreading. That's why you see some demolition crews spraying these projects with water when they explode. According to the BBC, Wuhan took this bridge down to replace it with a six-lane highway that's over three miles long. Demolition of the Ferry Bridge power stations in West Yorkshire, England, began in the summer of 2019. They kicked things off by tearing down a 374-foot cooling tower. Four more buildings came down in October, leaving three large silos behind. Slowly but surely, the rest of the station came down between 2020 and 2022. One particular demolition in August of 2021 attracted a large crowd to the old power plant. It was time to take down the 650-foot chimney stacks and one of the old boiler houses. Both went down in spectacular fashion. So why do chimneys and smokestacks like these always break apart mid-air? What has to do with the difference in acceleration at higher points on the chimney? That's because objects that fall while following an arc fall faster than a free-falling object. Because a falling chimney moves with rotational motion, the furthest point from the bottom falls faster. The difference in acceleration becomes too much for the mortar and concrete, and it eventually breaks apart. In case it wasn't obvious, there is a lot of math and physics involved with building demolition. It's not as easy as making things go boom. Located on the picturesque island of New Providence in the Bahamas, the Cable Beach Strip once boasted the iconic Crystal Palace Resort and Casino. This grand establishment met its end in October of 2018 marking the first significant demolition in New Providence since the Montague Beach Hotel.
The entire complex came down in about two minutes. At first, only one tower goes down, but after about 90 seconds, the next two follow suit. The demolition was done to make way for new development on the sought-after waterfront property. After some time cleaning up debris and breaking ground on a new resort, the site is now home to the Baja Mar Casino. In the heart of Gaziantep, Turkey, a towering 65-meter-high silo once stood as a testament to industrial might. But, like anything, years of wear and tear left officials no choice but to demolish the building. Demolition was scheduled for April of 2021, and camera crews were there to capture the moment it all came crumbling down. The demolition went off without a hitch, thanks mostly to the expertise of Mehmet Guler, a seasoned Turkish demolition expert with an impressive 40-year career that spans across 18 countries, including places like Azerbaijan, Iraq, and Jordan. To bring down this particular silo, located in a Gaziantep cement factory, a total of 60 kilograms of explosives and 248 capsules were employed. Goulart remarked on the complexity of the project, noting the inherent risks of using machinery for such a task. Instead, using explosives was actually the safest way to ensure a successful demolition. Nestled in Hilltown, Dundee, the iconic Derby Street multi-story flats stood tall for 40 years. These twin giants, known as Bucklemaker and Butterburn, once dominated Dundee's skyline representing both the city's ambition and the architectural spirit of a bygone era. However, as the decades passed, challenges arose. The buildings became increasingly difficult to maintain financially and equally tough to rent out. Their once modern allure had faded, and the structures, while proud and sturdy, had outlived their peak utility. The city's officials, keeping an eye on future development and revitalization, saw it fitting to bid them adieu. In June of 2013, spectators watched the iconic towers crumble into dust. To complete a job of this scale requires extreme expertise and precision. SafeDem, the local firm responsible for bringing down the buildings, utilized a whopping 10,000 detonators placed all throughout the buildings to get the job done, and in the end, it worked perfectly. Interestingly, amidst these giants stood a humble church. Despite its proximity to such a massive demolition, it only bore minor cosmetic scars. According to our research, the site where the buildings once stood has since been redeveloped. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another one just like it, then be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next time.